Yaman, let's start with Capital One, credit card issuer, um, and it had some problems with bad credit card debt as well not so long ago. Yes, I, you know, it's this is the qualitative portion of the test that we, we find out this week, and, and um, not everybody is uh, under the qualitative portion anymore. Um, 13 of the biggest banks are, and Capital One is one of them, and that's the part that they almost failed, they didn't fail, almost passed, but they, they passed with conditions, as you said. So it's vague. Every time they, they do this with, with the qualitative section, the Fed is a, a little vague on what they, what they find fault in, its processes and data collection and all these other kinds of systemic, you know, how they look at their risk. So they again mention these same things, you know, the, how they are looking at their risk, and one of and, and they mention one of their biggest, most important material businesses. They weren't looking at the risks properly. Uh. Now you would guess that's credit cards. And last week, the the, the, the Fed, when it was releasing the quantitative figures, talked about you know uptick in credit card uh, loan losses. Mm -hmm. So you know there there are issues in credit cards anyway. And apparently, Capital One wasn't looking at it that well. Okay, and we saw how Capital One shares are falling in after hours trading in response to this headline. Again, Capital One does pass the stress test, but conditionally it needs to resubmit its capital plan. Yaman, other banks, more prominent banks, have passed with conditions in the past, this, this part two of the Fed stress test results. What happens now? How do they go about fixing what, uh, what they don't exactly know? Because the Fed's been very vague, as you mentioned. What do they do? How do they go about doing that? And how long does it take? So last year, uh, Morgan Stanley was the conditional pass, um, which meant they could still do their buybacks, sh share buybacks, and dividend increases. And they did increase dividends. Um, they announced dividend increases as soon as the results came out. Um, but yet, they had to submit another plan by December, which they did, which the Fed re reviewed and said, OK, you met the conditions, you're fine. We ac accept your, your revised plan. So we don't really know what, what's in that revised plan. It's not about numbers. It's not about how much capital they're trying to distribute to shareholders or anything. It's more about this risk management processes that we talked about. And, and in Capital One's uh, case, you know, it's wherever the weaknesses were that the Fed wasn't happy about. They weren't, I mean, they, they, when they talk about this, and I keep questioning Fed officials when I talk to them at, yeah. about this, it, it's about the, the, all the formulas and the, and the stress tests, you know, what goes into a stress test. There are gazillion variables, and, and they go into these, you know, risk formulas and, and where you lose money, where you won't lose money. And sometimes those models aren't great. They're okay, they're okay but they're not amazing. And the Fed says, come on, you have to have better uh, formulas, better uh, models for these. So they have to improve those models.